The 6.5 is on the road here in Chicago at Microsoft Ignite 2024. It has been an incredible event so far. Surprisingly, well not surprisingly, we're talking a lot about AI and whether it's AI to benefit uh, end users, executives, you know, society as a whole. But this, this show is really focused on businesses trying to get uh, the most value out of AI. And you know, Dan, we can't forget about developers because it's about developers, 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 I heard. Yeah, well, there's really a pretty significant continuum. You know, we're a couple years into this kind of flurry. And again, you and I talk about this a lot. Yeah. It's not a couple years old AI. I mean, yeah. we're talking about decades of algorithms and machine learning, but what we are talking about is this big inflection that's taken place over the last few years. And enterprises are investing big. You right. know, we're seeing triple digit percent investment growth in, in many companies that are trying to figure out how to turn this into productivity. Yeah. And so we had an incredibly thorough, comprehensive keynote today. I mean, the announcements were, <laughs> there were so many of That's them. That's right. I don't know which uh, I would even start if I had to pick my favorite, Pat, but for me, it was all about how to get more value and how to turn that into returns for the enterprise and for those users and consumers. Yeah, and whether it's developers, AI engineers, I mean, everybody who has a technology badge uh, at a company uh, they all had something that I think that they could get excited about. And to talk about this, we have Scott Guthrie. He needs really no introduction here. Scott, welcome to the 6.5. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, thank great you. To be here. Yeah, it is great to be here uh, with you. And first time on the show. Um, you heard me kind of in the preamble, Scott. I talked about it's been a couple years. You know, of course, the chat GPT moment was this inflection. Um, you know, then there was kind of the everybody getting excited, lots of downloads, and then about six months later, and, and Microsoft was one of the first out of the gate with some really exciting advancements. Now we're 18 months beyond that. Yeah. Talk about kind of what are you most excited about? What are you most enthused about? Uh, what do you see at this maturity point in the market? Yeah, I think, you know, as you mentioned sort of two years ago was kind of the, the chat GPT moment where people said, whoa, you know, the world's changed. I think this time last year you had a lot of conversations about people that are saying, you know, we're, we're starting to do projects, we hope to be able to do this. I think the part that's changed and that I'm excited about now is, you now have companies in all industries saying, here's what we're live in production with. Yeah. And I think that, that productization of these large models for whether it's the financial industry and we had BlackRock on stage showing off, you know, and talking about how they're integrating AI into Aladdin, uh, using Azure AI, you know, whether it's BMW, who's integrating it with IoT sensors in their cars and doing AI, whether it's McKesson that we showed a good video of that are doing cancer drug discovery. You know, you're, you're really starting to see it being used and uh, being used, you know, both from traditional tech companies, but also um, leading edge companies in every industry. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. You know, um, I like to look at generative AI. Well, if I look back, dial back, there's a lot of, been a lot of tops down edicts, right? Um, sometimes moving off the mainframe to client server, uh, going to the cloud, right? The, the board and, and CEOs, but ultimately what happens is it all, it trickles down to the developer, right? Mm -hmm. And we're seeing the same thing with generative AI, right? We had just this incredible pressure. Hey, what are we doing in AI? How do we take advantage of this? But ultimately it ends up on the desks uh, of the developers. So there's a tremendous amount of, of pressure here. Um, how do you foresee, what does the developer experience look like uh, in, in the future? I'd, I think you know, developers are really the bleeding edge of how generative AI is going to be used to kind of transform every job ultimately. But I think if you look at uh, GitHub Copilot, as an example, that was the first uh, application that we built and brought her at Microsoft with these large transformational models. And you know, it started off as, you know, how do we improve, you know, code completion and IntelliSense in the editor? And then we kind of added, oh, how could you add a chat window next to it so that you could ask more broader questions? And you know, now it's being used for generate unit tests. You know, we showed off a demo in my keynote of. How do you do use it for advanced security to actually analyze for security vulnerabilities and then propose fixes for those vulnerabilities? You know, you're going to see it, uh, and we're, we're, we've already got it in the pull request process. So you know, right. code reviews and writing up the pull request notes. And I think you're going to sort of see AI be used across the software development lifecycle. And then the other thing that we started showing today 
and, and it's, it's fairly transformative to, to developers. I think we've, we've got more than three million developers using it today. And um, you know, on average, people are seeing about 55% uh, productivity wins with coding. And, and then the stat I like the most is just people enjoy their jobs more. And you know, we see 70 to 80% of people say, I, just, I feel more fulfilled because I'm working on tasks that I actually I enjoy doing yeah. versus um, I'm not having to spend as much time on some of the, the work that is part of the job, but it's not the fun of it. And you know, I think you're going to see this um, be driven forward. And then beyond just kind of the core coding experience, I think the other thing you're going to see is, um, and, and we demoed some of this with our GitHub uh, Copilot for Azure, is the ability to kind of take platforms and infuse it into the chat so that you can actually go beyond just coding. Yes. You can see, you know, how is the app doing in production? How, what is the cost of this app? How do I reduce the costs? And then we also showed off with our Azure AI Foundry and GitHub integration, you know, how can I use the models in GitHub? How can I do version control of the models in GitHub? How can I test evaluations? And you know, you're going to see really, I think, GitHub in particular be a, the home for developers, but also the home for AI development. And I think we're just getting started in terms of the, the full potential of using generative AI to help developers do AI. Right. And it's going to be exciting over the next couple months. Yeah, just a, a personal aside, um, my son's a data science major. Mm -hmm. And I always bounce these, these things off him, but him and his entire class right, are using uh, VS Code, GitHub Copilot. Great. And I sent him a screenshot of a picture I took of you on stage about on, on Data Foundry and also the links to, to, to Azure. And he, he, he came back and he's like, I'm stoked, let's go. But, but the, the amount, the, the speed at which these tools are taking off, I think it's pretty safe to say that AI landed first with the developers yep. that were making AI. Yep. It's, it's just fascinating. It, it's been a long time since I've seen anything like this uh, take off. It's super exciting. The pace that we're in right now is, uh, to your point, I mean, I, I think back to, you know, I think there's really only maybe two or three transitions I've seen that have moved at this pace. I think one was the emergence of the smartphone. I think one was the emergence of the web. And then probably the one before that was probably the emergency with Windows, yeah. where you, you suddenly had apps that within a year came out that just people hadn't envisioned or imagined before. Yeah. And um, you know, I think this is both a technology moment, but it's also a moment where end users are going to be profoundly yeah. uh, changed in terms of how they interact with technology as well. Yeah, and the interesting thing is the data would probably prove that those those earlier inflections actually didn't happen as fast as this one because we kind of see yeah. on all those charts. Yeah. Yeah. But the but I think to your point, it's sort of the feel that yeah. you start to feel something meaningfully change. And by the way, I think it's interesting to capture for the record. Um, it sounds like you're very bullish on the role of the developer because there is a bit of a continuum of experts yeah. that kind of have this perspective of you know, everything from developers will be really important to some people that are like, oh, in a few years, we won't need them at all. And I think we've, <laughs> we've all agreed that that's not where it's going, but I think somewhere in that continuum of how it's going to evolve, but it sounds like Microsoft, sounds like you are very committed to continuing to invest heavily and you see a ton of value Absolutely. In, that in that community, which by the way, ties into nicely the announcement of AI Foundry. Talk a little bit about kind of why you felt that was so important to move forward and, and why AI Foundry is such a big announcement for Microsoft? Well, I think one of the things that we've seen as, as organizations have, have kind of tried to move from kind of proof of concept to production is, um, you know, it's the, that, you know, previously, you know, certainly a year ago, there's so much AI technology coming out. There's so many different models. There's yeah. so many different tool chains. There's so many different frameworks and you know, organizations were, and developers were really struggling to figure out, okay, how do I make all this work together? And how do I make the right set of technology choices? Right. And do it not just to release once, but you know, everything this, these day and age is a continuous release process. And so if you pick a model, or maybe you pick two or three models, and you get in production, and then a new version of those models come out, how do you know that you're not going to both improve quality in some areas and regress in others? Yeah. How do you know the latency is not going to have a problem? How do you protect against jailbreaks? How do you protect against potential safety issues? And you know, if you require everyone to kind of take very small Lego blocks and put them together, you know, what we found is a lot of organizations were struggling with that. And, and 
were, were finding that they couldn't quite get into production. And so our goal with AI Foundry, the Azure AI Foundry service, is how do we take more of those end-to-end -end workflows and put them together, still be very open, so you can always use the technology or the model that you want, but how can we make it easy to go from idea to production? And then once you're in production, how do you run it so that you can understand cost management, you can understand security, you can, you can do model upgrades in a seamless way? And Foundry kind of automates all of that end to end. Um, and so, for example, when a new model comes out, or if you want to test a, a different model provider, you can actually even do kind of split testing where you can say, I want 4% of my users yeah. using the new version, you know, 96% the other, and then let's do evals and see what's the difference in terms of accuracy, in terms of groundedness, am I seeing different business values, slide it up or slide it down. And that ability to kind of automate and have kind of a, a CICD process, if you will, it really enables organizations to uh, bet bigger on AI, go faster, and then do it in a secure and reliable way. Yeah. So Scott, um, as we've seen in the in with modern applications, uh, we fractalized whether it's microservices, whether it's multiple APIs. Uh, at at some point, and, and I think we can all agree that AI applications have even more complexity. So once customers get AI apps into production, um, what do you have, what structure do you have there to help IT professionals and operators uh, to manage all of this? Well, then that's, that's a big part of what AI Foundry provides is that kind of, um, it's, there's both, I'd call it the developer face, but yeah. importantly, there's also the operations face and the security face. And so, you know, simple examples would be, how do you do real-time monitoring of your apps? Foundry gives you a way that you can actually see, okay, how many AI inferencings per second are you doing? Are they reliable? Are you seeing errors show up? You can even automa automatically with Foundry set up security alerts yeah. so that instead of not only the, the, the IT team that's managing the AI infrastructure, but maybe, for example, your CISO office or your DevSecOps team, how do they get an alert if they detect there's a user that seems to be trying to jailbreak us? Right. How can you take that signal from the AI system, but also look at what other web pages on the site are they using? Are they accessing other APIs? Right. What else are we seeing from this IP address? And that ability to kind of integrate across developers and across IT and potentially the CISO office, you know, pretty much every large scale AI application needs to be able to do that and be able to do it 24 seven. And um, that's part of what we're trying to do with Foundry is, is kind of, in, you know, we've, we've termed it in some way the app server for the age of AI. Right, yeah, we, def we Satya reinforced that, uh, that, that nomenclature uh, in, in our meeting with him. So this is the observability layer mm -hmm. at, the, at the bottom that, that was. Uh, observability and I'd say management, deployment, and um, the security layer, if you will, and compliance boundary. Yeah. And those things are ultimately essential if you're going to actually really use something in production. Right. And and really use AI to kind of change your business. And you know, I think I think we're we're on the forefront in terms of providing those capabilities today. And one of the things I also said in the keynote is what's nice is that all of the Microsoft copilots that we build internally are built on the same stack. Okay, and so customer not only, zero. So we're customer yeah. zero, and in some way, you know, we have more uh, AI applications and more users using AI today than any other company on the planet. Right. And so having that, that battle hardening that we're doing on top of that stack be the same thing that, you know, any organization that walks up to Azure can take advantage of, Yeah. Um, I think is, a, is a, a key reason why it is so mature and it's really going to help us scale and, and give our com customers confidence that it's going to meet their security and operational needs as well. Absolutely. Well, Scott, let's let's finish up here talking a little bit about trust and security. We know that you know we we talked a little bit about the speed, diffusion of innovation, how fast it's going. And I think there's always been a bit of this: how fast do we go? How much do we bring trust, privacy, security into play? Um, and I think AI has been a great example. Mm -hmm. And so. Satya, and I believe you and all the others that got on stage today yeah. seemed very focused on making sure that wrapper of security was mentioned. Yep. But kind of how are you negotiating that in terms of strategy, product development, building, working with your partner's community, Scott, to make sure that you maintain secure, security, that you build the trust, that you keep data private, and at the same time, you can't sacrifice going 
even a minute slower. Yep. So how are you kind of doing that right now? Because it seems like a lot to take it on. It's hard. At, at the pace, what do you have, like, how many hundreds of announcements it felt like today? I mean. It's not easy. I, I would say it's, um, but, but at the end of the day, you know, both quality and security are the most important things that we can do. Uh, at the end of the day, it's, if, if you don't, if you don't focus a lot on those yeah. two, nothing else matters. And so that's why we've been pretty clear that is job number one. And that, that is what we were very clear teams yeah. prioritize above all else. And if that means we need to slip an announcement or need to slip a feature, that's mm -hmm. okay. But make sure it's, you know, as long as it, you know, but don't ship anything if it's not secure and it's not high quality. Um, and, you know, we've, we've been driving this year a big initiative we call SFI, um, which has been, you know, literally probably 50 to 60,000 engineers, we've kind of said, you know, tools down, we're gonna focus on security for many months, um, and we're still doing that. And it's gonna go on, you know, forever, but it's, it's been a fairly intensive process where we've done a tremendous amount of defense in depth and hardening, and then also building the platform that's gonna enable us to keep our system secure, but then also build the platform that's gonna enable our customers to also use the same tools to make their system secure. And so a lot of what we're doing with SFI is, is both hardening our systems, yeah. but also exposing those two, same tools and the same APIs and evangelizing to our customers how they can do it as well. And we're doing it both with software, but then also some of the announcements even this week that we're shipping. Um, you know, we announced, for example, our new Azure HSM module, yeah. which is a custom chip that we put in, that we're putting into every single server going forward that allows us to kind of store uh, secrets in an HSM so it's not in memory on any server. Um, we're doing a bunch of work with our Azure Boost, which allows us to not only improve performance and, and um, uh, of storage and network, but also offloads and, and protects the system even more from a security boundary perspective. Uh, and yeah, I mentioned earlier GitHub Advanced Security That's right. is another great example yeah. that we're using internally as well to kind of do credential scanning, looking at code for potential vulnerabilities. And you know, we, we take very much a, on the security front a, a called a platform approach, which is uh, you know, how can we take core capabilities, turn them into platforms, again, that we use as customer zero, but then also that we provide our customers so that they can also leverage as well. But you're never done. Sure. And it's, it's, it's gonna be something that we all, as an industry, need to keep laser focused on yeah. forever. Well, Scott, I want to thank you so much for joining us here on the 6.5. We know it's a busy week, and you're probably going to be running from thing to thing, but congratulations on all the announcements. Look forward to having you back again soon. Um, have a Th great event. Thank you so much for having me. It's been great Thanks. to be here. Thanks, Scott. And thank you so much, all of you out there watching the 6.5. We are on the road here in Chicago at Microsoft Ignite 2024. That was Scott Guthrie. Great conversation. Tune in, subscribe for all of our content here at the event, and, of course, all of our coverage on the 6.5. Pat? Time to say goodbye. Adios. See y'all later.